At 71 years now, Betty Bigombe cuts the image of a healthy and determined woman far younger, it seems, than her actual age. However, many were surprised in 2014 when she declined a ministerial job and instead took up a World Bank job. And now a special envoy to President Museveni in South Sudan. She says she's content. And maybe we can also... Bigombe in particular is happy with her work in ensuring peace in northern Uganda. We asked her how she got the courage to participate in the northern Uganda peace process in 1993 when many were just fleeing the Lord's Resistance Army. I asked... Uh, the British profilers to profile Joseph Kony, and their response to me was, "He has multiple personality disorder. He's a psychopath, and you know psychopaths can be very charming, can be very generous, can be very humorous, and that is how they get their uh, their victims. So." Uh, 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 multiple dis personality disorders, psychopaths. Uh, because if you talk to some of the so-called wives, of, they will tell you how friendly he can be. They will tell you how um, generous he could be. They will tell you even his commanders, like people like Sam Kolo, will tell you how jovial, generous, uh, humorous he could be. Right. So he has this, but the flip side is this deadly person. Being an Acholi by ethnic background, Bigombe was motivated to end the conflict, which had sent millions to their deaths through violent means. I also talked to his parents. Mm, at one time, I thought his parents were in danger when I was still based in Gulu, and I brought them to stay with me, uh, the parents. But that was also helpful in a way that to dig out some information about this individual. Because if you look at many rebel activities, you will always find a group that will defect and start their own movement. It never happened with Khan. He has a way of having a spell on people. She recalls that the beginning of her involvement was not easy, with many doubting her motivation to end the conflict. And I still went knowing very well they could have abducted me, held me hostage, and mistreated me. Asked what she made of the Lord's Resistance Army leader, Joseph Konyi, she says he had a method to his madness. Was, of course he was using the brutality, you know, if you're caught trying to run away, the way you're murdered was very brutal, so people, it instilled fear. But the other thing was that he predicted events which eventually occurred. So they totally believed that he was communicating with God. There were numerous attempts at peace in northern Uganda, many of which failed, prompting her to temporarily abandon the process. However, following the February 2004 Bologna massacre, Bigombe took a leave of absence from the World Bank and flew to Uganda to attempt to restart the peace process. From March 2004 to 2005, Bigombe was the chief mediator in a new peace initiative. She is content that the conflict in northern Uganda is now over and the region can thrive in peace. I recall the times I would be the only person on the road and if... I saw any human being, then I thought, this is it. This must be LRA, because these areas were totally controlled by LRA. So, and then now to hear children singing, schools are up, uh, hospitals, even if um, they're not at their best, but they're functional. So this is very gratifying. I think it's extremely rewarding to see the outcome of the efforts. However, she says she plans to write a book about the Lord's Resistance Army, especially focusing on the life for the child soldiers. Betty Bigombe is the mother of two children, Pauline and Emmanuel, and is fluent in Acholi, English, Chiswahili, and Japanese. <laughs> in her latest attempt at peace, Betty Bigombe was also involved in the release of 24 Ugandans, previously held captive in Myanmar. Most of these Ugandans had been working in the Middle East when they sought what they thought were more lucrative offers in Myanmar. So when they arrive in uh, Bangkok, they're bundled up in these vehicles and they're taken, then they cross to Myanmar, to, uh, to Burma. 
they also, I think, connive with some government officials like border, border patrols and things because they're waved off without their documents being checked. But sometimes they are genuinely smuggled into Bangkok. She relates how she had to talk to the captors of these Ugandans and later the Chinese authorities who are in charge of the area before securing peace.